Hey guys, how's it going? This is Free Play Frenchie. Welcome back to another one take video in my room. It's been a while, I do apologise for that. Things have been very up and down, very busy, 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 and not too much to say. So, I don't want to make a video if I've got nothing to chat about. Here I am now though, I am bringing you an inverse review, followed by some things I got on my London trip recently. I thought about doing two separate videos for this, but what the hell. If you're just here for the inverse review, just listen to the inverse review. If you want to see what I got at the Japan Centre in London, stay tuned. Um, you might hear a little bit of music in the background, that's because I'm playing a new game, uh, which I'm reviewing for InVision community.co.uk if you haven't seen the last review or if you didn't read it it's of this game in in a space not inverse in a space review if you haven't checked that out yet please do go and tell me what you think because i'm also you know a writer as well as a youtuber and any feedback you give me is awesome so that's up now let's but i wanted to tell you about the game anyway because i know some of you guys just like to hear me ramble um so in a space in a space was this new game made by polynight games i think I could be wrong there, I think it's probably Night Games. Um, and it looked very similar to kind of Abzu, Journey, um, the kind of mysterious games where there isn't a lot of information going but they're usually really beautiful. And in this game you play Cart, or the Cartographer, which is a flying plane, um, and you're assembled by the architect, which is like this little um, bobbing submarine. I don't know if he's a person or if he's just a machine, um, that follows you around, and you're assembled by him to help be his assistant in learning more about the ancients. You're in this famous world called Inner Space where the sky and sea kind of merge, and there's all these different worlds, and the, the I have to say the, the colours were beautiful. The graphics I wasn't too fussed about, but the colours were beautiful, and it was a lovely colour scheme, very universe-like, very um, space theme -y, purples and all those kind of bright colours. Um, and you play the aeroplane, and you bob along and you fly around and you collect wind, which is the energy that is used to power like everything in this universe. Um, and you collect that and as you go you upgrade your ship and you find artifacts and they tell you more about the inhabitants that lived in inner space and in the inverse. Um, and you learn more about their lives through the artifacts you can collect and you also upgrade your plane. So this was all pretty good, this was all getting me good. Um, and I like the feel of it so far. Um, there was no break though, so you can't stop the plane. You just have to keep going. There's also no guns. It's not a very action fueled game, it's kind of like a mystery game. Um, and it's very chill. That being said, I have I had some reservations. It's not a bad game, and you know I love indie games, you know I love reviewing indie games. Um, but um, the only trouble, I had trouble with the no breaking. So when you come to a corner and you want to stop, you want to stop and look around, you can't. You have to what they call drifting, turn around, which means you're upside down um, and then come right round again and, and for me, I don't know if this is a PS4 problem but the plane was too close to the screen, to the camera for me to really see where I was going. Now to combat this in the game you have these um, sort of like sphere-like objects where you can fly into and it will hold you there so you can have a look around um, in your plane and you can see where you're going a little bit but I didn't really use those, I didn't really find them very helpful because once you're in this little circular thing you can't twist and move, you're just you're just looking around, well you can look around but it didn't really help solve the problem so for me the main downsides were the mechanics um, I think the story had real promise and it was quite interesting um, and I think you know the the world was very interesting, a very unique game. My problems came from the mechanics, not being able to stop, and also not really knowing what to do um, in some of the situations. Later on in the game, when you're opening different worlds and portals, you go into the world, and something kind of has you have to do something to make other things happen. You know, um, and in some worlds, I kind of knew what I had to do, and it was fairly obvious. Like in one, you have to um, spoilers you have to chase around this bird-like spirit creature and it was obvious that you had to follow them because when you did the music started playing and you realised it was a chase. Um, but in another one, I had a real hard time just finding where I was supposed to be going and then I found some kind of object and I was like, okay, I need to do something with this, this needs to happen. But I couldn't figure out how to get in there. And there was no clue. The only clue you get is from the architect who tells you something like, oh, good luck on your adventures or... If only we could find a way to do this. For example, in the first section of the game, the very, very first section, you encounter um, the sunfish, who's like um, a spirit god type thing. Um, I think they're called something different in the game. Um, but you had to find a way to kind of activate him. And I was having a real time, real hard time doing that because none of the stuff I was doing was working and I couldn't figure it out and there is an explanation if you like myself got very stuck on the sunfish there is an explanation 
in my review on envisioncommunity.com. So go and check it out if you're stuck there. Um, that was very hard. And like a few other, they were very cool creatures and I wanted to appreciate the creatures, but I was just stuck in the whole kind of, what do I do here, guys? You're not giving me enough to go on. I don't know what to do. So that's my general view. Pros, very cool game in terms of concept and it looked very nice and, you know, it was unique and I appreciate that. Uh, cons being mechanics, camera being too close to the screen, not being able to break, um, that really put a little bit of a down on it to me and by the end of it I was kind of like, okay, I'm done now, I'm done now. So let me know what you guys think. It's retailing for 15 99 I would probably wait until it was 10 99 um, and then buy it and let me know what you think. Or get it now! Like, I've, I glanced at reviews just a minute ago because I don't, I try not to look at other people's reviews before I do one. Um, and mostly it's been positive, I think. Positive from most people, so maybe I'm just being harshly, um, unusually harsh, um, which isn't like me. If you've played it, let me know what you think, or go and play it for yourself, or look at the trailer, see if it's your cup of tea, and let me know what you think in the comments below. So that was my inverse review. Um, now I went to London the weekend. And I was planning on doing a whole video to talk to you guys about it and show you everything. But we were, I went with the elusive man and we only had two days. Um, and we were literally bossing through it every day, different places on the tube, not really stopping to take pictures because we've been there before. So it wasn't really a sightseeing type thing. It was a, went to go see Les Mis at the um, Queen's Theatre in Soho, which was amazing and so cool. Um, I would recommend to everyone seeing a West End show in London. It is pricey, but if you just go once, you know it's worth it. Um, we also went to Enamo, which is an interactive Japanese restaurant where you organise, where you <laughs> not organise, where you order everything from your table. So it comes up on a big screen. It has a projector above your head, and there's a little interactive um, touchpad over here, and you click on everything using the touchpad. And there's also games to play while you wait. So if you've not been to Enamo before, go. It's really cool. Um, it's again pricey, but if you're just going once, it's worth it. Um, and then the next day we went to Japan Centre to get some lunch. We basically ate sushi all weekend because we're big sushi buffs. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of things I got. So, here's my Japan Centre bag. I went a little bit crazy in there, went, spent a little bit too much, but I thought you might be interested. So I got these. These are koala biscuits. These are strawberry. The strawberry is very, very potent. You can really smell it. Um, but they're lovely. I think last time I got chocolate ones. Um, and they're very sweet. It says here, 23 grams of sugar per, um, hang on, per 100 grams, I think it is. Per 100 grams, oh, I don't know, yeah, per 100. And I've only got, I've only got 48 grams in there, which is, so it's not totally 23 grams, but they are very strong. And they come in a little, oh, come in a little packet like that, and they look like this. Look how cute that is. Mm. They're very, very cute. I would recommend them, but they are sweet. Are very sweet. Mm. And then, what else do you have to get in Japan Center? Pocky. Pocky is brilliant and so Moorish. You know, I'm gonna open it because, well, I won't, I won't open the whole pack. I need to eat those first. So I don't want to open something yet, but they come like that. And they're just so yummy and Moorish. And I also got some soba noodles to have for lunch yesterday, which I did. Um, and the noodles there are great. They just they're so yummy and they're much better for you than like, well, I think they're better for you, they're probably not, than like uh, super noodles you can get in Asda and Tesco's and stuff, and I don't bother with that. I also got some pineapple gummy candy, which I'm very looking forward to trying. I'm going to wait to open these though because um, the elusive man's sister really likes pineapple and I'm going to share some with her because I think she'll like it. But that looks really good. I've never bought that before so I'm looking forward to trying that. I also bought one of these which I should really eat soon. This is a... Doriaki. I always said donbur donburi, which is not what it is. This is a doriaki, and it's basically two pieces of pancake with chocolate con chocolate inside. But that just sounds perfect to me, so I should probably eat this soon. Um, and scotch pancakes are great. Everyone loves scotch pancakes. Uh, this is empty, but just to show you what I got, I got a mango um, sangria sangria drink. I didn't realise it was alcohol <laughs> when I bought it. Um, it was only one percent though, so I just chugged it back basically and didn't even realise it was. Um, alcoholic, but yeah, this was a mango sangria drink. I wanted some peach tea, but there wasn't any there. I've got a real hankering for peach tea at the moment. Um, and finally, I bought these, which I thought were super cute. I've bought these in Japan before. They're actually erasers, but I would never 
a puzzle eraser. I would never want to use them for that. I just thought they were super, super cute. There's like some little sushi there and some tea. When I was doing my doll photography, which I had an Instagram account for, for Monster High dolls, I used to have them eating things like this all the time because I thought it was super cute, but they're just, they're just fun. I just thought it was a nice souvenir. And then this is the mother of all candies. I got some Japanese candy and they're all different. You can't, like, I don't, I don't speak Japanese, but um, to give you an example, I've got this one here is apple. There were peach ones, but I think I had all the peach. Lemon. There's a pineapple one there, which is really good. Peach was the best one. I think that's an orange one. There. But they just taste like real fruit. They're really good. Grape. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I ate all the peach ones. Because really, the grape one's really nice as well. But yeah, so that was really nice Japanese candy as well. So I really recommend if you go to London, go to the Japan Centre, there's two places you can go to um, and it's just a nice little treat if you're into Japanese stuff. Wow, this is turned out to be a long video, I'm really sorry, <laughs> it's because I condensed it in both things. Uh, if, you, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching, please leave me a comment in the, in the bottom telling me what you think about Inverse or about London or anything else, I love ch chatting to you guys. I'm going to go and put a photo up of some of the stuff I did in London. There's a couple of pictures on my Instagram already at the moment, so please do go and check them out. Let me know what you thought. We got some donuts from Donut Time, and they were amazing. So definitely check them out as well, Donut Time. Um, and I think that's everything. But yeah, all the pictures are on my Instagram, and I talk more on there. And yeah, I don't know. Um, I've got an announcement to make, and I'm not going to make it in this video. I'm going to make it on Instagram in a second. So. Go and check that out as well. It's, it's very exciting. It's to do with Instagram and other stuff. Okay, I'm going to go because I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, be cool and be kind. Please leave a comment and a like telling me your thoughts on this video. I will try and keep regularly posting as best I can. I love you all very much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.